Hi, STA students. Uh, today, uh, we've got a couple of things. One is we've got a video for you to look at. Four artists paint a tree. There are four Disney artists. Uh, you'll really enjoy it. Many of you, I think, may have even seen it before, but I've watched it 20 times and I still learn things from it. So it's a brilliant, brilliant video. Uh, and now, the other thing I'm going to show you is how to paint a value study painting without using black. Okay, we're going to create our own black using two colors, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And then we're going to use white to make the grayscales in between. All right, so that's going to be our lesson for today. And uh, let's see if we can get this done. All right. Okay, so as you can see, we have a pile of ultramarine blue and a pile of burnt umber. So basically a dark brown and a dark blue. And when we mix them together, I'm going to use just a touch of water. I'm not going to use much water at all, just enough to get the brush. And when I take the brown, put the brown here, I'll take an equal measure of blue and I mix it in, it gets into a darker, just a tad more blue and I can just keep going back and forth. If it gets a little too blue, then I add a little bit more brown. If it's too brown, then I add a little bit more blue, but I do get a nice dark blackish color. It's what we use a lot of the time. And there's more life in this color than there is a dead black. So whenever you can, mix your values this way. So there's my pile of black, and I'm gonna use it as a, uh, well, let me, let me do this. So now I'm gonna mix a mid value. Okay, so I've got my dark, dark. There's my light, light. Now I'm gonna take a little of this white and mix it together with the paint that's on my brush. And you can see that it gives you a nice, even middle gray. So now I'm gonna also mix my, the rest of my five values. So I've got my dark, my light, my middle, and I'm gonna mix my light middle, which is right about there, maybe just a tad more. And I wanna mix this color or this value is right in between these three. And then I'm gonna take one and do just a little bit darker. And I wanna mix it here, and it's a little too blue, so I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to it. And I'm going to get my middle dark, maybe just a touch more. I'm looking at that's my middle, so this has to be darker, but it can't be as dark as my, as my darkest dark. So I'll mix that in there. And so there you go. So there's my five values. I've got light, middle light, middle, dark, or middle dark, and dark. All right, so those are the five values, and that's what we're gonna use to paint this painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do right now is just draw in, I'm gonna use my dark, just a touch of, touch of water on it, not much. And this is my ugly stick. Let's see if I can put it in. That's what you call an ugly stick, you use that for drawing. All right, and now let's draw. So. I have sketched this in, just a light sketch, and I have a, a photo that I'm working from. So what I'm gonna do is with my, with my ugly stick, I'm just going to mark down some lines. I just wanna get some basics in here. They don't have to be perfect, because I'm going to paint over things anyway, but I do wanna get myself established with some, some line work here. And if you notice, I'm not worrying about all these pretty little lines. I just want to get some dark line work in here to give me something to work toward. Here, pull that in. That's where the eye is going to be. There's an indentation here. Have this in here, the temple is. And a little spot where the ear duct's gonna be. 
Boom. Oh, all right. So now that I've established that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wash just to knock down the white. Okay, and the wash is going to be with a little bit more water. And I'm just going to take this and, and do this right here in front. So I'm going to mix this wash. So I'll be able to see through it a little bit. I'm just going to wash over this whole thing. I'm not going to wash over the tusk. Now this may seem really dark to you guys, but when I put my darks on top of this and my lights, you'll see that it's not as dark as you think. Okay, so now I've got to wash in. Now, normally, I would let this dry, you know, for the next 15 minutes or so. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to towel dry this a little bit, okay? And it'll lift off, and I'm cool with that, too. Okay, now, so I'm just kind of rubbing this down a little bit. So now, the first layer I'm going to try and put in right now is my dark darks, okay, the, the, the super darks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little brush and I'm gonna mix an equal amount of that ultramarine blue and umber like we did earlier. And I'm gonna make it dark. And I'm going to focus on the areas that are really, really dark in my drawing. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda lay in and you'll notice how much darker this feels compared to that wash that you thought was really dark. So now I lay this in over the top, and I'm just picking out areas that are really dark in here. So there's a part that's coming in. Let's see, this comes up. To there. a dark shadow here okay and you do have to load up your brush a little bit more often so I'm gonna kind of load up with some more darks and there's a part here where the tusks get tucked into the mouth there's a dark area and I'm thinking shapes remember how I'm always talking to you guys mr. Parsons and I are always talking to you guys about shapes so paint the shape don't worry about whether it's a tusk or if it's a nose or whatever. It's whatever that long diamond shape is. And in my, in my artwork or my photo, I've got this kind of a darker shape. So I'm just painting in the shape. I'll get back to the detail when it's time. And then I'm going to do the little eye, which is going to be right here. And it's kind of a little rounder shape, kind of a little football-y kind of shape. And then there's a little bit of shadow Underneath this cheekbone here, there's a shadow indentation here. There's another one here where the temple is being created. And then there's a separation line here where the ear is coming up off of the head. And I'm just tickling this thing back and forth. Nothing special, nothing crazy, no super detail yet. Okay, so that's almost all of my darks, not all. A little bit more here. And just because I start with the darks doesn't mean that I have to completely never do any more darks after I've done this. You can go back and forth between darks, middles, and lights, but at the very beginning, you just kind of really do want to concentrate on one little section at a time first. 
It's called the block-in stage. So you're just blocking in your darks and your middle values, and you're not really doing much of your light values. You'll do a touch, but not really much. Okay, so I've got a little of that. And there's a, now I'm gonna go into this kind of a darker gray, but not a full, not a full dark. Because there is kind of a shadowy area here. It's not as dark as the dark darks, but it's definitely darker than our, our wash-in. So I'm just gonna lay this in, and I'm actually using it much like you would a watercolor. I'm just going right over the top, and I don't wanna get too much going because the water will lift up some of that dark, and then I have to go back in. There's a little bit of a shadowy area here, and a little bit here. This will come down into this trunk area here. And this shadow is separating where the tusk skin fold is and the trunk. So there's a little shadow and that helps it go around. There's also a little bit of a shadow. A little bit of water. Here. Add more dark create this shadow right there, like that, creates that little shadow. So now I'm starting to get some form on my elephant, and it's still just value. Remember, there's no real color in this. Value is the light and dark of a color. Hue is the actual color of the color. So if I were painting red, then I would be using the hue of that color, the redness. This is the value. So we're doing a five value study using two colors to create my black and one color to create my gray. And that's burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and white. Okay, so now that we have this established, now I'm going to establish my middle values. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit more white to this. Not a lot, I wanna keep it in that middle range. Maybe just a tad lighter than the middle range. I could even go into that little mid-light area. And now as I'm looking at my elephant, I'm picking out areas. That's a little, still a little too dark for what I want. I want a little bit more middle, a little lighter tone. And I'm just gonna block this in. All of this is gonna change a little bit, but my block in is gonna be the same. I'm just gonna block this lighter area in where the light is hitting the elephant here. There's a little bit here on some of these wrinkles and right above his eye, there's this bone that's catching light. And you'll see how it changes here. And now I'm starting to get a little bit more form with this elephant. And I'm just putting in a couple of light areas where the wrinkles are. And right on top of this fleshy part of the trunk, there's some pretty good little light areas here where the light is catching on these wrinkles. And these are just my mid lights. They're not my lightest lights. You're gonna save your tonal best for last, as they say. Um, and then there's a couple of light areas right up in here on the trunk. There's like one right here. And again, also remember the tools that you're using. Try not to paint detail work with a brush that's that big. You really can't get those nice little wrinkles and control the brush, right? So let's use brushes that are appropriate for the type of work we're doing. If we're doing a little bit more detail type work, we're using a smaller brush. And we use the tip of that brush. So like there's a little light area right in here. A little bit here up on the top of the head, on the top part of the ear. And then in here, it, the ear looks like a crumpled paper bag, so I can be kind of loose with my brush strokes, and it gives the ear kind of, a, kind of a wrinkly quality to it, so it looks like it's been run through the dryer. 
Okay, and that's just all middle value stuff. So we haven't done any light value yet. And obviously, if you noticed, acrylic paints always dry darker than when you first lay it down. So when I lay it down, it seems pretty light, but as it dries, it always dries a shade or two darker. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can always lay stuff over the top of it, so don't worry about it. That's the nice thing about acrylic is it's very, very forgiving. And there's a little bit more up in here. Okay, so now, I have worked three values in here, if you can see this, okay? I have my mid-tone wash. I have my dark, so this is my dark, dark. I might even go a little darker, depending on if I can mix it darker. But my dark, dark, my middle-tone wash, and my light middle. So that leaves me, oh, and then this one here so we've used four tones, because so, this one here is my dark middle. So the only thing that I'm really missing right now is my bright whites. And I'll save those till the very end and blend back into it. So at this point, now I'm going to go back and forth between my darks and my middle tones. Okay, and I'll tell you which ways I'm going and what I'm looking at. So I'm looking in here, and there's some wrinkly areas in here that I really want to establish. So I'm gonna go in with my middle darks. Okay, so I'm gonna get that middle dark going again, and I'm gonna lay in some wrinkles and some detail here. Just to establish some really cool little areas in here. So now I'm gonna do these little wrinkle areas like this. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller pointed brush. Okay, this brush here, it's called the Filberts. And the cool thing about it is I can get a nice flat tip to do my little detailed wrinkles. So I've got it like this, and I'm just gonna use the edge of it to create these really neat little wrinkles that I wanna put in on the elephant here. And there's some pretty cool wrinkles going on in here. I'm using the flat edge of that Filbert's brush. So there's some wrinkles here. I'm gonna go darker in here. And this is just his lower jaw area. And I'm gonna put just a few more wrinkles in here up on the top. There's a couple coming down this way. Now, even if I go really thick like this, not a problem, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some lights over the top anyway. And then I'm gonna put some more of these heavier wrinkles in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these wrinkles coming down the trunk like this. And I'm just using the side of my Filbert's brush to create those little bumpy lines. I want little hatches. And if you notice, I'm just using those middle values right now to create some texture in this elephant here. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to throw some tonal highlights on here using two what they call rounds. 
Here is one round here. And then I have an even tinier, small pointed round for my super details. Now I'm gonna go in with some middle, or actually kind of lighter lights, not full whites, but lighter lights to do some of these details. So I'm gonna mix a little gray in here, a little gray in here. Now I'm gonna use this to do some of these details. There's some reflection and some little bumps of his skin. You know, elephants are real wrinkly. So I'm just doing this to touch in some of this bumpy area that's here that's catching light. And there's a couple of little detailed spots in here. And some right underneath this, right where this comes up. Here and right in on the, the tusk flesh. Now these seem pretty bright, but when I hit the whites, you're gonna see the difference. Now here I'm just painting these little shapes that create the elephant's super wrinkly trunk. And all I'm doing is putting these lighter grays above those darker lines that I put in. And that's what gives it that real heavy wrinkly. Now, I'm gonna go a little darker, but more detailed around the eye, where these wrinkles are. Like that, and then there's a little spot in here. All right, almost rolling on this thing here, so I'm gonna a couple more little details in here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish this off with just some little super darks and some brighter highlights. Those are what they call your tonal best. That's your super darks and your super lights. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of whipping some of this stuff in here like that. Now, let's start with the super dark. So I'm going to take my detail brush, mix in as dark a dark as I can. All the, and when you're doing the dark, the dark, the darkest darks, you've got to make sure that your brush is clean and there is no white. If you have even a little bit of white in there, it is going to lighten it up a lot. So no white, clean brush, get it as dark as you can. If you go a little more on the blue side, that's better. Okay, so now I'm gonna really hit this eye with my dark, and I'm gonna put a little bit more detail inside of these wrinkles. Dark areas here. And I'm looking for areas that I can kind of punch out, as they say some darks, so maybe draw some, some wrinkly lines in here, some dark areas. Like that. Okay, now that I have that established, now I'm gonna pop those highlights. And this is the opposite way now. Now I'm gonna take, and I gotta clean my brush really good. Make sure it's clean. And now I just use straight up white. And those straight up whites are gonna pop. So I'm gonna do, watch this. This is right on top of what we thought was really light. And I hit these little areas like this. And those just scream off of the, uh, off of those lighter grays that we put them on there. So you have to be sparing where you put these super bright highlights. It's gotta be right where it's a big reflection. Put a little bit more here. And I don't get to use a whole lot of them, just a little here and there. You can also use it as a directional for people to look toward the eye. So watch this, I'm gonna kind of create a little bit of a pointer or a directional by popping these highlights 
toward the eye, maybe even pop one in there. Like that. Nah, that, that's not so bad. But. And I'm going to put a little bit of gray in, just kind of tap some of these areas down a little bit. Brighten up my elephant a little bit more here and there. And then I'm going to do these tusks really fast. I'm going to do just kind of a lighter gray. That's going to be the darkest my tusk is going to be. Well, yeah, probably going to be pretty darn close to, to my darkest. So there's that. Then I just take a middle light in between there. Put a little bit of a light side on here. And then right in the center of that tusk, I put a hot highlight. And it'll make that tusk look kind of shiny and glassy. Like that. All right, and then there you go. So you have a value, a five value study using no black. Okay, five value. No black. We use ultramarine blue. Burnt Umber. Okay. All right, so there was your lesson for doing value studies, okay? Five values. Dark, middle, light, middle light, and a middle dark. Five values. And we showed you how to do the elephant, uh, mixing those other two colors. Uh, try this. It's kind of fun to do. You can do it with watercolors. Uh, you can do it with acrylic paints. You can do it with oil paints. Um, you can even try, you know, well, you really can't do it with pencils unless you have the ultimate. It takes a lot more to do that. So um, next week, we're going to do kind of the same idea using a value study, but we're going to be doing it with a palette knife. All right. So you can use a plastic knife if you want, or if you have real palette knives at home, that'd be really, really good. So let's be prepared. See you next week with the palette night demo. All right, see you, bye.